We should be. I hope that's not a life picture just there. Or me just going like that. <laughs> I think, I think you're is. alive now. You just said something. Uh, <laughs> I really hope you didn't just get me scratching my ear. <laughs> okay that could be interesting we will watch that one back okay so good evening welcome thank you to um, our channel my name's barry and i'm jay and together we are from matusu craft <laughs> i'm getting thank you i'm barry did i get i've got yeah. myself completely in that i'm confused by scratching my ear <laughs> at the beginning welcome to our channel thank you so much for joining us this <laughs> evening uh, we are Barry and Jay from Mitosu Crafts. We're independent sampling up demonstrators based in the UK. So if you live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands, you'll be able to purchase current sampling up products from our online shop. Do use the current host code, which can be found on our Facebook page or website at mitosucrafts.com, and you'll receive a handmade card from us the following month and any extra gifts if you qualify with your order. Do pop in a comment, uh, say hello, uh, if you're watching the replay, pop in another comment and we'll do a random draw at the end of the live stream uh, and you win whatever we create this evening. Yes, yes. So that's good. So there's a lot of you on here already. So thank you very much for, for joining us. It's nice to see you all chatting before we go live as well, which is great. So we're going to say hi to some people first. Yeah. Yeah, so we have hi Janelle, we have Connie, Steph. Um, Sherry, Betty, um, Cor Carrera, I think. Cor I, Jay, you're better than that Correa. one. Yeah. Um, Correa. Mandy, who have we got else here? Yana, um, Carol, Rebecca, Mum, Linda, Joanne. I think that's, and then it jumps to the bottom again, same as every week. Maureen, so far, I may have missed a few names in between, and Deborah, Kathy. so far. Um, Kathy, yes. And Krista, hi, Krista. And Krista, obviously. Krista is our moderator, so do say hello to Krista, and she'll uh, look after the comments when we are um, demonstrating, uh, and hopefully she'll catch any questions. If, um, if not, hopefully we'll catch that as well when I move to the Big Mac. Good. So yes, so we put out a couple of live stream throughout the week. So if you'd love to see more card making, paper craft inspiration using Stampin' Up products, uh, do consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, and if you love what you see, uh, give us a thumbs up, share the videos to your friends and family as well. That will be amazing to help our channel grow as well as um, pay for the posting of the um yeah, pay for placing yeah. the card as well. But don't mind if anyone would like to say help support us, we do have to donate button down in the description. So if you would like to help us um, support our channel and um, keep these postings going up, we are thinking about maybe having to change how we're going to be doing the, um, the drawings um, due to the fact that YouTube must change something in their payouts. The fact that our oh, earnings from YouTube have dropped quite considerably for some strange reason yeah. we can't work out why so we're looking at um doing that so yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah so lovely so we're going to do the drawing yes for this card right here so let's pop it there oh yeah let's bring you down to our um hands with, with all your all of your all of my stuff, stuff. ready so that's the card we're going to be getting ready to give away and that's just if you haven't seen the um how to create this the video is on our channel from the previous live stream so using water and ink and smooshing technique and i'm going to share our screen so hopefully you should see that there now we just update the comments did we have any extra comments no we didn't so 28 of you put comments in um actually i just want to just do that for a moment. That's long so it'll take us out. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of this card is going to be. Good luck, everyone. Sherry. <laughs> Congratulations, and Sherry. The, the, the winning streak <laughs> continues. So Yay. well done. So that card, Sherry, is working its way over to you. 
So excellent. you know the drill, Sherry. Yeah, if you'd like it, <laughs> send us an email. No matter how many times you may have sent us an email, we still need an email. Um, so well done, congratulations. Cool. That card is working its way to you. All right, so well we're going to crack on with tonight's demonstration. We're going to be using the um, Wild Roses stamp set tonight. Ooh, do we have it here? Yes. Ooh. Um, so yes, yeah, so you're going to do a card which um, you did for a thank you card, wasn't it? For, yes. Um, so for uh, we do a blog hop every month, uh, showcasing our thank you cards for uh, that month. So this on Tuesday. No, Monday night. Monday night, uh, there was a blog post on our website and I shared the card that we'll be posting to our customers who order from us and uses the current host code. Uh, and I use this card. So I'll be recreating that by changing it slightly um, because I use some dice on there. So I'll probably use a punch instead. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be gonna... doing some heating bossing. Mm -hmm. And keeping it simple, really. But yeah. obviously, there, obviously, you're going to need some tools. Um, you're going to need a heat, heat embossing. But yeah, going to be doing some heat embossing, and it's kind of a wedding card. It's suitable for a, that. You could use any sentiment, like, but I suppose how I've done it is more of a bit of a wedding card, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's very elegant. And, yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm going to be doing mine first, and then Jay is going to finish up. The reason I'm doing mine first is because I have to space on the table, and then he can then take make the notes. So yes, you that's make what a mess. Anyway, moving on, let's go face down. Yes. And crack on. Do put, pop in the comment how many times you think Barry or I will <laughs> ask each other for favors. <laughs> yes. So good. All right, Jay's going to have a little look at the questions and take them, write the names down. Oh, so if there is any nice. questions um, you've asked already, please ask them again. Um, and Jay will. Jay will hopefully pick those up if they haven't been answered already. So yes, um, where do we start? Let's just move some stuff out of the way. So I've got it already on my stamparatus. So this is a stamp, again, as I said, we will be using. Wild Roses, it's a lovely background stamp, so it's quite a large stamp. So it is good for doing your nice background. So this is it here. Nice, large size in comparison you think to yourself this is the card base so it is the size of pretty much a full card card base so um so lovely it's a lovely size and i'm going to do that i'm going to cut it down to size and we're going to heat emboss it okay so first things i'm going to do is i've got my card base cut to size already so i've got about making this into a tent fold and around uh, the only reason either a tent fold or a landscape so i'm not sure i think it's going to be going this way so i'm not really sure it's a sideways tent fold i don't really know what you would call this a half normal size i don't know <laughs> um so uh, just what is it? I'm going to say a sideways tent fold because it's a tent fold that way, but it's just going on its side. It's been windy. It's it's it's, it's, it's yeah. It's a winky. It's, it's it's a winky day. It's a windy day, and the tent has fallen over. So that's what we're doing. It's a it's a blown over tent fold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on quickly. So that's the side of what I'm doing. So I've cut this down to our normal size. It's ten and a half centimeters in width by 29.2 centimeters in length and then scored and folded at 14.6 centimeters. So that's obviously just use your equations to whatever card bases you have. I'm gonna take a normal bit of Wisp and White and you're gonna, with, with this one here, is you will need to, the way that this works, you're gonna to need to start off with a bigger piece than you need to be able to cut it down after you've done your embossing. Um, the reason being, it's easier to um, it's easier to use a stamparatus with it. So you're going to need to you're going to waste some, but just just get over the wastage. It's it's necessary. Um, so just cut your piece down. So I'm going to cut this at ten point five, and we will have a large. Yeah, I'll just cut that at six inches just so it's in there. And I know I'm gonna cut this down to a small panel in between, but it's just easier to have room to hold it when coming to heat embossing. And you're gonna get a nice image in the middle and you can kind of selectively edit what areas you want to chop out and keep in. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And we're gonna bring in the Stamparatus. 
Tent down, yes, tent down. Let's just pop that stuff. Sorry? So I've got this in here. Oh, that just fits in with this setup, which I've got. I'm just going to move the camera up a second. So I just need a little bit more room. That's it. That's given me. I've got room to move it now. So what I'm doing is with this, we haven't even put the backing on yet. I don't want to go right up into the corner. Um, well, I suppose I can on this particular one because I'm using a whole. Um, because I'm using a, I'm using it, and I'm going to cut it down. But if I was being a bit more specific, I would. Another way you could do it is you could pop your stamp where you need it. You could pop one of the magnets here. And one of the magnets here. And that kind of acts as your as your thing so it goes up, so it goes in, then you can then push a stamp in like that. So that's that's good. Okay. Then you can then pick that up. So we haven't even put the backing on yet, and that's why it's sticking. To, it's not sticking. So I just need to. And then that can go in like that, and then that that sits in that position. So when I bring my stamp apparatus platform over, that works as well. You can sometimes you can pop it in there. But obviously, if you're worried about and if you need edge to edge, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go edge to edge because it doesn't always quite stamp correctly in corners. So just a word of warning there for you. So this is another way of doing it. So I'm going to be using Versamark and I'm going to ink up my thing over here. So I'm just going to pop a stamp underneath and we're just going to do the whole thing in Versamark. So I hope everyone's had a lovely week. I know it's very cold for a lot of us here in the UK. And um, we've had snow, uh, which obviously for us is... Minus 40. Minus 40, wow, okay. Is it Fahrenheit or Celsius? <laughs> so that's that, that's cold. So we're gonna come over and we will stamp that and just... Just push and connect. And then I can then take off. And on there, I'm not sure if you can see here, but there is a watermark on there. So it's now wet ink. If I'd done this on the ink in and it hadn't done it, I could pop it back in there again. I could bring the plate back over and then I could then um, ink it up again and get a better impression which you will see later see me do later on with the stamping so put that to one side i'm going to bring over um oh, actually i need that well do you need me no i'm determined i don't I do not need jay i will use what i've got on the table <laughs> So I've got a bit of scrap paper, albeit quite small. I would ideally like a bigger piece, but that's fine. It will work. I think the bit which we're using, because I'm working on a large area, the bit which we would normally use wouldn't work anyway. So I've got my thing, and I'm going to use gold, the gold stamping embossing powder right here. And this is a great way. This type of stamp set is perfect for using your powder because you're covering such a large area. Um, it's You're going to get a lot of coverage. And you're going to get through. You're going to get through this an awful very quickly. Well, not very quickly, but you're going to use a chunk of it at least, especially if you're doing a couple of these. Use them up. But use them. You've got to so use them. You've purchased them, so that you, you, it's a waste of money if you purchase them and it's sat in the cupboard and you're not doing anything with it. It's, that's a waste of money. So you brought you brought it. Just use it. So we're going to pour on our powder. Wow. What? Minus 40 degrees Celsius is equals to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's cold. So I've done one side, and you can see 
looks beautiful already. And then I just turn that round and then just pour the rest of that. And you can see because I've used a Versamark, it has, it's that wet ink, it's a wet sticky ink. I hope I said sticky and not stinky. Um, sticky ink. Which will go on there. Okay, you can see there's a little bit down the bottom down here which hasn't quite stamped correctly. So that'd be the area which I cut away. So that's that. And don't be don't be scared. Just chuck, get your powder on. I see people they do a little bit here and there. Chuck it on. That's what this bit of paper is for underneath. So you can then go like that. But get your lid back on as soon as possible and make sure you screw it on so you don't chuck that everywhere. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring in my heat tool and I'm going to heat set this. Okay, so if you haven't seen heat setting and embossing before, this is going to wow you now. So it's going to get a bit noisy as well, so bear with me. Actually, I'm going to just... You can see at the moment, obviously, if you haven't seen this, it's quite a matte finish. Well, it's a very matte finish. So we're going to make now turn this into a shiny finish. So I'm just going to stop there for a moment. Can you see, I'll see now the difference. You've got the bit which hasn't been embossed and heated, and then you've got the heat setting. So that's what, if you've never seen this technique before, then that's what heat embossing is. Okay, and there we have it. You now have a completely heat embossed gold background. That obviously is picking up quite nicely in the light. Okay, so that's that. You can see it didn't quite stamp correctly down the bottom down here, but obviously I didn't pick up on that because I was using Versamark. I didn't push down hard enough. But again, that's the glory of now doing this when you've started with a larger panel and you're going to cut it down to size. This is obviously the size which side which I'm going to remove and and yeah, take away. So that's that. So heat embossing, it's one of the first techniques I think we saw when we started card making. It's one of the techniques I think you go wow every time. And even now I go wow when I see it because it's just amazing. It's just absolutely beautiful. So that's that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to size. So I'm going to bring in the trimmer. Okay, Tommy. This is one. He's right by the side of me. So I want to go down, I want to take this down to eight centimeters. So I'm going to take, I'm going to cut a little bit off this side here. And 
And then I'm going to take a little bit and I'm going to take that down to eight centimeters. And I've kind of like taken little bits off from both sides. So I've got an even, so I've, I've kind of got a nice cut edge on both sides. Um, and then, so that's eight, that's two and a half centimeters smaller than my card base. So I'm, I'm going down two and a half centimeters. So that's one inch smaller than my card base. It's kind of like my ratio, which I'm doing. And then I'm just going to take this end off here. So my card base was foot is 14.6 centimeters. So I go down two and a half centimeters, which would then take me down to 14.6. 13.6, 12.6, and then I'll take the 12 and I'll cut the 12.1 over here. Okay. So that's that. So I kind of, you always work it at work down. So I start with the card base and then decide how big I want it, work the ratio down. And then whatever one side is, two and a half one side, you take off the same ratio off the other side. Then that way you'll get even layers. It's just my little tip for you. All right. I'm going to bring in some gold foil as well. So we know that we were eight cent. We know that we were twelve point six. Sorry, um, twelve point one. I want to take that. Yeah, so I've got enough. So I want to add three millimeters, which is probably about which is an eighth of an inch, to my cut to my layer here. So now it's eight. So it'll be one, two, three. And then that was 12.1 plus the three. So one, two, three, so which takes you to 12.4, which is that one right there. Okay, and then that can match and layer on that one. On my prototype, I did this and I did actually do it with, I used the stitched, um, the rectangle stitch frames but i'm going to keep this not using those i'll show you what the stitch one looks like afterwards i'm going to i'm going to do this one without so that you can actually see it so again it's one of those things you then don't have to if you want to buy the, the dies for it you can do if you don't want to or you can't afford that or you haven't got that but you still want to do heat embossing then it's, it's one less thing you, you've got to buy but i see the stitched edge um the stitch rectangles do just add another element to it so I'm going to stick this down to my cart onto my foil first, like this. And I know a lot of you are probably screaming at me now going saying, gut that card, gut that card, but I'm not <laughs> going to gut it. It's fine. Yes, you should have seen my face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do this first and I'm going to pop this to one side. I'm going to ideally put something heavy on it whilst I start doing getting some other things ready, just so it sets up and sticks down. Because it's going onto a shiny surface, it will take a little bit longer to set up because it's not as porous. Well, I don't think it will probably as well. It may be as porous, but it's not as. So it takes a little bit more time to set up. So not much longer, but you do just need to just give yourself a little bit more play time, a little bit more drying time. and it just helps those edges sit down a little bit as well so, any what's the comments happening to jack tonight yeah, jack talking about how cold it is um and we have, yeah that's a good Yes, it's cold here as well, but for, for us this is cold as some... no, not as cold as some of you by the sounds of it, but um. It definitely is a bit chilly here. Not you, we're not used to it. Canada, they got loads of snow. I know. I love, give me give me the cold weather every time. I'm just going to pop a pop a nice heavy punch on top of that. You go to Canada. I go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Separate holidays. Yes. <laughs> um. So that's that. So that's to one side. That's drying up. I'm going to. I'm going to be using. Actually, I do need what. So there is number one here, Mandy. Can I have some vellum, please? Oh yes. I knew I had to get something out. Mm -hmm. See, it's Jay's fault. I said to him, "What can I do? Can I can I do this?" He suggested vellum, and um, I didn't get it. He planted the seed in my head, and then knew that I would forget to do it. Hi, Deb. Hi. 
Thank you very much. So I'm just going to clean my stamp for a moment. So I've got the chamois. So the chamois is, again, a perfect cleaning tool for your stamps with the Stamparatus. You know that Jay uses it an awful lot for everything else, and I pretend to use the Stampin' Scrub for when I'm not using the, the Stamparatus. But it's just easy that you can clean and you don't have to take things off. So if I was doing lots of these, you can kind of clean. If you wanted to change colours, the, the layout still is exactly the same, but I've cleaned it. It's a little bit harder to do when you bring in the Stampin' Scrub, which is this one here. You can't, it doesn't quite work. You could, I suppose, remove this and then do it, but it, that's what the chamois is kind of like helps. This is ideal for your stamps on your block. You can clean it. So you've got, if you haven't seen the Stampin' Scrub before, you've got your wet side and you've got your dry side. So you clean it this side and then you dry it this side over here. So lovely tool. So I'm going to just, I just need to tidy up a little bit. I'm going to pop this away and Jay can actually then use it later on because he's going to have to set it up himself anyway. So that should be enough time whilst I've waffled there. I'm going to be using the, um, what is this, the fine art ribbon, because this is a lovely neutral ribbon here as well, and it's got this beautiful gold fleck in it. So I thought this worked really well with this particular card. So we've got that, and then that ribbon is going to go across like this. Right, I'm just going to cut my ribbon down to size. And you will need a little bit of the tear and tape. So again, the way that I attach my attach mine is take a little bit of tear and tape off and pop it. Fingers and thumbs. And then I just secure it that way there. Okay, and then take another piece off the other side. Get it nice and straight there, bring it round and over. And then down like so. And that's that ribbon then stuck in place. Okay, lovely. Now I will need another piece, but I will do that in a. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to do that now um, because there's enough room with the stamparatus, which it will go in. So I'm going to pop this under like like this. Now I th I think I've kind of given up on tying bows, um, so I'm I mean, so I'm into tying knots. <laughs> And because this is a wedding card, I suppose, it's a tying a knot wedding card. So that's my excuse for tying a knot. Um, so, um, so I'm tying the knot for this wedding card. Um, and I, knots work. You might notice that there's a few knots on my cards recently because I've given up tying bows on cards. But I like knots. So there we go. In and then just take off the excess so we can then snip at an angle here and snip at an angle there. That was a straight rather than an angle. Let's just come in again. Another nice thing. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, remember you can purchase stuff from us via our online shop. If you'd like to, links to our online shop can be found down below in the description. 
Um, also remember at the moment it's celebration until the end of February, so you can earn free items as well with a qualifying purchase of £45 or more. Um, if you'd like more information, head over to our website and we've got some um, we've got some bits, it's all over on there. Okay. Or alternatively, you can think about joining our team if you've got a large wish list. That's also something which you can do as well, and you can get £130 of a product. Become for a become a member of our team, yes, become a member of our little club and um, get 20% discount off of your um, off of your purchases for at least until at least June. And um, yeah, become a Matusu crafter, Matusu stamper. So that's that. So this is where I'm going to abolish these bits here like I had. And I can now stamp this as it was, as it's intended to in the corner, because I'm going to be stamping in this area rather than it's when you're stamping, if you want some detailed image in this top corner up here, it's not, it's, it's always a little bit hit and miss. So just be aware of that. So I can put my magnets in place and I'm going to actually stamp directly. Oh no. Oh. I would see on my prototype I stamped directly down onto it but I nearly but my idea is now is to do some vellum okay so I might not actually need to do this I've got myself confused let's see I'll do it this way first because if I don't like this way I can go back to my original idea but if I do my original idea first and I don't like it it's stamped on there and then there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to go with a thing which can be can be removed easily if I don't like it. So some vellum. And I need this to be about an inch thick. And then we can then have some vellum. go round and round so the idea is that I stamp on it like that and then it attaches around the back okay and the vellum will just diffuse it what I did do on um, again I'll show you I can show you it now because I have got it here what I have done it, it fights of it is um, I stamped directly onto the actual embossing. Now I did use the stays on for this one, so it does great. It does stay on, um, and obviously I was going to rotate it around this way. But that's what it looks like. Obviously, if you do it, and obviously it does fight with it. You don't. I don't. What do you think? Shall I leave it on? Shall I do it this way, or shall I do it the vellum way? I'll let you decide. And that's also the rectangle stitched frames as well um, on the embossing part. It's it's there. It just adds a little bit of detail, but I haven't done it on this one. It looks better in person than I think in camera, but it does yeah, fight. It does it fight does with it. Fight so that's why I think the vellum will work with it. But you can, I suppose if you had a different colour, you could you could stamp over the top of it. Um, so yes. So I need to. I'll sit and I'll, I'm going to use your. <gasps> rude, that's my Jay just got, Jay just got one set up and I've just taken it off. I'm going to hide the Just sound. so you didn't want to ask me. No, I didn't want to ask you. I'm only on one. <laughs> can I? Can you what? Can I suggest something? You can suggest, Jay obviously doesn't like what I'm doing at the moment. So he's coming in and he's going to, he's going to change it. If you cut that smaller, so you put that in, so you have a bit of bellum underneath and slightly on the top. So that width is smaller than there. So you insert it. So instead of having another band, do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I can use this one here. Yeah. But you might want it taller. Yeah, I'm going to Oh, I will need it taller because it will need to go under the ribbon. Okay, yes. Yeah, so good point. All right, so we're going to try Jay's idea. So I'm going to cut this. So do it a couple, a couple I'm going to do it about. Two, I'm going to do it two inches because then that gives me an inch for the stamping. That gives me then a little bit of ribbon, ribbon a little bit underneath, and this needs to be. See, this is where the two of us still help each other out. So 
and that four needs to really be around about yeah four and a half I, I take it to four and three quarters to start off with and just see how that fits underneath so then you can hide the blue okay so yeah okay so the idea is that you we we would attach it underneath this ribbon so again i probably should have done this before the ribbon going over and then used a ribbon, but I can strategically place a little bit of glue underneath yeah. there, and the glue can go underneath this ribbon, and then is hidden, and yeah. then I can stamp at the top here. Okay, yeah, good job. Less tall, tall, less tall, less tall. Just so you, yeah, stamp it first, and then cut it. Yeah, first. I'm gonna stamp in. Sorry. I'm gonna no, that's fine. See, and this is where the two of us work well with each other, even though I do get frustrated. It's probably that. You don't like what I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then that allows me to then bring that down and then remove some from the bottom down here. So it's going to be stamped. Stamped there. I'm going to use stays on again as well because of the in, because I'm using vellum. The stays on will just stay on. It, it's it, it's what it's it's what it says on the tin. It just stays on. It's um it's more of a permanent ink. And it smells. I know some people don't like to smell, but it smells a miles and I love it. I really shouldn't be sniffing it too much. To stand up a moment. And there we have love and laughter forever after. Yeah, because I've used stays on. I am going to clean quickly. Um, if you get, if you do it quickly, and especially if you use the scrub, you can get it, you can get it off. Um, but obviously, especially with photopolymer, it doesn't work quite quite as well as that. Are you trying to ignore me because of giving you? Nope, that's fine. I don't need to clean. I thank you very much. I am perfectly fine on my own. So we knew that. Yeah, I think maybe just a, a hint of it coming out the bottom down here. So whoever's going to win this, I hope you've got a wedding coming up that you need to give somebody a wedding card because I can make it for you. So that was two. I'm going to take a quarter of an inch off. Take it down to there. My knot is tied the wrong way. Nothing which glue dot won't sort out. Yeah, that's fine. I might have to tie that again. I might I might just have to abolish that ribbon. I need no, to nice. My knot's kind of the wrong way there, but I think it's, I, I get, if I get a glue dot underneath yeah. there, I can I'll, I'll force it back that way. You will go that way. Um, but what I would suggest you do is you do it the opposite way around to how I've done it because I have done it a bit cat candid. Take a fraction more off. I'm gonna take another eighth of an inch off, which is three millimeters. I've got glue dots on the table. Yes, I, I put it there. <laughs> so I'm happy with that. I think that's where that needs to be. So we will grab some glue. I kind of need to just pop a little bit of glue underneath. This is where it's going to be a little bit trickier for me.
So some glue around underneath that. Bring my vellum down and then we can then position that in place. Again, it would be easier if we had done this beforehand and then put the vellum on, the vellum on top. But we adapt as we go. And that glue has now obviously held that has been hidden by, by that ribbon. Glue dots. And I'm just going to pop the glue dot over here behind this. And I'm going to manipulate this. Right like that. Just so it goes where it needs to be. And this ribbon does get um it's quite a it's quite a messy ribbon, so if you like the frayed edges, then that's fine. But I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, a trim. Just to tidy up some of those. Um it's still going to be a little bit, it's going to be frayed, but that's um, that's fine. But I'm just going to just tidy it up so it looks an even, an even cut. Who knew you need to be a hairdresser when you're a, a crafter as well? A ribbon trimmer. And there we go. That's that. Right there. That can now go on my blown over tent. So my, so my my tent down, so man down, man down, tent down. So if you if I just come in, we've got a tent fold, and I'm doing it that way. I don't know what to call it. So it's a tent sideways. It's a sideways tent fold, or a tent blown down, or whatever. I need some dimensionals. We're just going to add a little bit of height to this. Jay, can I have large? Can I have large um, dimensionals, please? I brought over small yeah, ones. Sorry, I got some people. Okay. That's it. They're just a bit easier to um to use. Use up everything, all of your edges. Don't let anything go to waste. So I'm nearly done. So Jay's going to come over in a second and he is going to do finish up with his card. So there we go. So I'll just take these off. Book fold, Karen says. Book fold. That makes more sense rather than a blown over 10. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go so we will then just get this centralized in my card right here and there we go and there is my Wedding card. I couldn't think of what it was there. Um, wedding card using the lovely Wild Roses stamp set. So what do you think? Does that get your thumbs up? Do, do we get your approval? And would somebody like to win this? So somebody will be winning this card at the end of tonight of today's video. So good. All right, well, we're going to crack on with a demonstration. Jay has got one coming up right now. Um, I'll just seem to share his comment. I like blowing over 10 better. Um, yeah, so that's that was what my first one was. So again, that was going to go on what's like that. So it works. But again, because of the sentiment which I was using was quite wide, it didn't quite fit on there. So which is why I then decided to go 
that way around there. And with the addition of the vellum in there, which Jay suggested, just so that the, the background didn't interfere with the stamping. All right. So that's good. Or even Valentine's Day. You've got, you've got Valentine's Day coming up. You can just say love you. Also, you can have something. That's a really nice Valentine's card as well. And and from your from your away from your typical red, or you could do a red layer. That would be really nice. And a red ribbon of something. Red and gold. Really nice. So there's lots of variations you could do. Oh, I might do that. Um, so there we oh, go. Four. You don't give me any cards. Huh? <laughs> before yeah no before we don't give each other they're all my other secret valentines i've got Jay. but all of our lovely people that watch us they kind of win these cards so excellent all right so i'm going to pass you over to jay and he is going to do card number two oh it rhymes <laughs> he's going to do card number two <laughs> there you go it's all yours Cool. I haven't even tied it up. Yes, thank you for that. So, yes, Barry did really well. Thank you yeah, so I'm much. I'm so surprised. How rude. It, it took you long enough. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm only joking. But where is the stamp? Um, number one. No, because you moved it. So I'll be using the same wild roses and I'll be recreating um, or change, changing it up slightly. So Barry already shown you how to put it on. Uh, he should have left it on here, but he didn't. So I'll, I'll try his. I'll try his um, method. Shall I? I thought that was your method. Well, put it like that. No, I, I I was aligning mine on the plate, but I like yours better. So oh, okay. see, I learned something new too. Cool. And my card. So this is the card from the blog. Um, using Misty Moonlight, uh, You Are Amazing stamp set and the Wild Roses. The flowers are from Wreath Builder Dice, but I'm going to change it up and use a punch um, instead. And yes, and I'm actually going to change the card base and add matte on the another layer underneath. Mm -hmm. So my card base is Seaside Spray. So use your normal card base. And my mat is Misty Moonlight, which is a centimeter or three eighths of an inch smaller than your card front. I've cut another piece of Seaside Spray. And this one, the, the same height as my card front, but the width I've cut to size. Um, I wanted it taller, so then I can cut it down afterwards. So hopefully that makes sense. So this one is, yes. So I'm gonna cut that down to three millimeters less than the mat, and I'll cut the height down later on. So with this one, so I know that that's going to be the top. We really need the thingy. So I'm going to go up. And then that should still fit. Yeah. So what you, I did bring in just to show you the difference. Uh, Whisper white or basic white. This is just a normal layer. Not that one, this one. So that's the same because you do have the, the white is a lot more smoother. So I'm going to show you the difference first uh, in Misty Moonlight. No. So that's the edge of the stamp. What is, what is happening? I'm going to stand a bit of paper on the floor and just play. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the Whisper White first and I put that slightly towards to, to the right because that's the edge of the stamp. And as you can see, the stamp design doesn't, won't actually stamp on the edge of that. Okay, so Misty Moonlight. And because I want it really dark, I will, the great 
thing about the stamparatus is you can stamp it over and over again. So just ink up the design. And I have been blending with this. I've been using my, the blending brushes with this ink pad, so it is slightly less juicy. So um, caress your plate. <laughs> So as you can see, it's not very um, dark. So just continue doing that for another layer. And hopefully that didn't move the plate. I'm just gonna stand up. I probably didn't put enough pressure the first time. Oh, it did move, but you get the idea. So you get a darker image um, if you do it twice. So that was my test piece, so that's good. <laughs> I'll make sure this one won't move. So for this one, I'm gonna have it the same. And I'm gonna have that there. It's not gonna... Yeah. There's always the back side. I wanted to show you that um, the seaside spray is a lot um, coarser in texture. So you probably need to, uh, I did the original like three times. I use chalk eraser to mess up. Ooh. I use a magic eraser to massage mine. What are you massaging? So you can see uh, the texture. If you like that texture, it's actually quite nice because it's su subtle, but I want it a lot darker than that. The misty moonlight with seaside spray really looks lovely together, I think, anyway. Magic eraser. Oh, oh really? Oh. And then I'll do final one. See if my if my test piece came out okay, I, I was gonna show you another technique with it, but maybe for another time. <laughs> Tables like it's very squeaky, isn't it? Squeaky. And this side it's normally just for crafting. We don't need this side. Ooh, Tommy, what are you doing? Need to ink for this. All right, Tommy. Tommy's on my lap, so <laughs> we'll see what he does. And I can't stand up. Yeah, we'll just do that side. Oh, so I'm I'm gonna stop there. You can carry on building the up. Tommy, are you are you gonna help me? I don't think you are helping. So I know that uh, I wanted it. What was it? Eight point. So that's nine point two, which is thirteen. So this one is ten eleven. No, here. 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, just on the edge. 
that was lucky. So I cut that down so it's got a, the same proportion on the left and the right edge. You're right. Yeah. So that's going to be on there. I've got my pieces here. So I'm just using off cuts and I'm going to use the dragonfly sponge instead of the flowers. I'm so stingy. I'm just going to try and get three out of there. One. Tommy, stop moving. Two. Three. Yay. <laughs> And then we have, ah, uh, no, you have to get off me now. You keep moving. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I thought I could craft whilst he was on me, but apparently not. Uh, so Barry moved this piece earlier. I didn't make, I didn't actually have it straight anyway. But all right. Yeah. But you'll need a good cling mount sentiments. I tend to use the grid paper to help me align it and make sure it's straight on the block. So I'm aligning that straight on against the grid and look for a reference that's straight and then align it on the grid underneath. Just moved it. And I'm going to use um, stays on for this one. We find the stays on a lot darker than the memento. But again, if you're going to use the stamparatus, you can um, stamp it a couple of times in memento. And this one is 1.9 centimeters, or that is three quarters of an inch. And I'm just gonna um, stamp that on the seaside spray. Hopefully it, it will be straight. Right. Am I moving? Or um, cut it down afterwards. I think that's quite high. Let's see. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just gonna snip that on the side. And then that's pretty much all of our elements. So I wanted it quite um, simple, obviously with uh, a bit of help with the Stamparatos. Uh, if you don't have the Stamparatos, I'll just show you another way, but I'll use black this time just to make it really dark. Actually, I won't use black. I'll use Misty Moonlight again. Yeah, pretty much, I think you stop all of this ink. <laughs> it's such a lovely ink and um, it's one of the ink colors for the 2020 20 to 2022. Hmm? So we need to re-ink it back Yeah, I think so. Right. I'm just gonna, if you lay it flat, put your card on top and then use a block. This one is probably be better. But you can't obviously go back in and re-stamp it. So just make sure that you've fully pressed that in. 
so this uh, technique or this method is only for like one time stamping. So you get kind of like a faded denim. Wasn't that an in color? That dapper denim. That that was the in color. Yes, that was. So, could, um, but it, you still get slightly um, textured. But obviously, if you have the stamp apparatus, you can go over it and just make sure that your paper doesn't move. Um, And another way to create more is obviously you can use blending brushes or uh, what I did was actually color with blends as well. So you can just highlight a lot of, um, Barry did this with his uh, Valentine's card. He used blends, but to color the DSP. So you could also color this in the blends. Um, Mango Melody, I'm just gonna highlight a couple. Um, of the smaller flowers. Is that, oh, I have it the other way. Um, just the middle bit, but because it's the ink on it is quite light, you can see the edges of it. So you just need to be a lot, um, a lot more careful than what I'm being, I'm doing. To there. That's probably going to get cut off anyway. And then I do have the dark balmy blue. And then you can color some of the airs as well. And then leaving some in white. So this is how you can get kind of like a couple of tones as well. So, but as mentioned, you can use your either adobe or your blending brushes as well. Adobe will probably be better because it's quite, uh, you can pinpoint some areas a bit more. So I want, I just want three of them as white but you just, you get the idea and that's another topper and you create your kind of like created your own um, background and designer series paper really. And in Blue Peter, Peter Passion, here's what I created. <laughs> so this one, I used the Stamparatos a couple more times and I did that two or three times, but our ink pad was a bit more juicy. So, Hopefully you like that. And that's a, another way that you can use the, the same background stamp, um, but you can see there's a difference in the amount of ink that you add. That one I added light, no, pool party dark in a couple of them, and then the rest in dark palmy blue. So I just wanted to show you that quickly um, before we add this on. We haven't had a background stamp that we, we um, for a while, so we haven't really been doing large stamping. But it's, it, we really like this, this one because it's floral. <laughs> and because the design isn't too um, feminine, I, I think the floral design of it is still quite, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, unisex because it's not too floral. It's quite a bold stamp design. You can get away with just changing the color and making it um, more masculine because the color combination for this was actually inspired by um, a men's shirt that I saw probably last year when we could still go out to go shopping. Um, just before Christmas and on that shirt, um, it had some complementary colors, um, the or pumpkin pie on it, and some yellow. So that's that's how this card came about. 
So that's just gonna go there. And I'm gonna see how long that is. The bumblebee is again three millimeters or one eighth of an inch bigger than this than the sentiment. So that one is 6.2, so 6.5. I didn't pre-cut the bumblebee card uh, beforehand, the width of it, because I wasn't too sure how I'm gonna cut the sentiment. But I did know the height of this beforehand. Where is the card? So yes, so if you order from us uh, this month and use our current host code, you will receive this card next month as well. Or if you put on added a comment, uh, and if you're watching the replay, add a comment and we'll, we'll give this away on our next live stream. So finally, we're just gonna add this on with dimensionals. There. Oh, uh, we had a comment uh, the last live. We add lines on our dimensionals. So, because normally I craft like late at night and I tend to forget to put switch on the light. <laughs> normally Barry will switch on the light for me. It's just so we know which dimensional has still got the backing. Uh, when it's really dark. So sometimes uh, you can normally tell that it's um, a different, it's more shinier with the, when it's sticky, but sometimes you can't, I can't tell. So the easiest way is to line, uh, use your stamping blends to add lines. And then um, you can clearly see which area still needs um, to be peeled off. So yes, so we we had a comment about that the, the other day. And I'm just adding the dragonflies. So randomly, you could also use the edge, the side of your paper snips. Don't open it up, just on the side if you want it more um, appetite. <laughs> if you want it more flappy, I guess. I don't know, what, what, how do you say it, Barry? Raised. Raised, oh yeah, you told me that last time and I was like, but I want it. Appetite. <laughs> I want you it want going it like that. Want I want it uppy. Rather than raised, uppy. <laughs> Yes. Right, I'm nearly done. There you go. I'll, cr I'll create another card with this one. Yes, we're talking about the Joseph thing as well. So yes. I think I've, um, I've, I've said I'm going to do a video for using doing a Joseph cut technique. Yeah. That's an, uh, another great technique. I've never done this. it before, so um, have we got anything planned for Sunday? Uh, no, I don't think maybe so. We're, maybe we'll do it on Sunday. Um, I do have... I'm just going to add gems, jewels, and then finish up. In the middle, of course, you can color your pearls as well. You can see it. What? Even color is that? That looks dark. So you can have. I was only gonna add one, but it's quite small. Yeah. Everyone's laughing at happen. <laughs> it's up. It's raised. There we go, and done. 
think everyone wants to see me do the Joseph on Sunday. Yeah, you do that. Okay, Joseph on Sunday. I've um, <laughs> at least I've got to think about it now. <laughs> so that is the card. Uh, this one from that one. So I don't. I prefer obviously. I prefer how dark this one is to that one. Um, but I prefer the card base on this one. But yes, so hopefully you like those and Barry's card as well, which we're going to be giving away when he moves over. I just need to clean this because I forgot. Um, what's coming up this week, Barry? Oh, the spot uh, creative challenge. I did use this stamp set as well. Um, so I'll show you the card for that in a second. Um, on what's oh on Friday um, is the gentleman crafters design team blog hop, um, and we've used kind of like the same color combination. And we've recently had the blending um, brushes and stamping sponge technique class. So uh, one of the technique that we use on the class we we created for the card and a 3D item. And then on Sunday, I have the Sunday stamping blog hop, which I've used, nailed it. Ooh, I, I really like the, the project that I created for that one. So um, look out for those. Are you gonna come over? Yeah, I'm just uh, replying to Carrera. So don't forget to hit the um, thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel and share the videos. Uh, it would really be helpful for us as well. And I don't know where I put those cards, you know? Oh, it's here. So whilst we're waiting. So the other card from last um, video was an old, uh, alternative, alternate of this one. So this is the wonky one. <laughs> and it's a tenfold, a, a proper tenfold. Uh, so check out how um, I created that on the previous live. And this one, it's not the most exciting card, um, I have to be honest. And um, but I challenged myself in using two colors that I hardly use, and they're um, from they're retire they're gonna be retiring soon. So rococo rose and terracotta tile, and again this one was inspired by the spot creative challenge um, card sketch, and I used I don't know if you can see it's actually got a watermark stamping on there using the wild roses. Again, the sentiment is from you are amazing. You're right. Yeah, oh, battery's going. Uh, so yeah, so watermark, uh, watermark stamping is so easy using Versamark ink pad, uh, and it creates like really subtle uh, design onto your card uh, front. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> uh, so yes. Yeah, so uh, what do you think of that? It, it, when I was doing it, and this this uh, topper was actually done by stamping my ink pad as well onto the card. Uh, so using card bay, uh, card for the layer and then ink pads for the topper. So two ways in adding color. And it reminded me when I did the ink pad stamping, it reminded me a bit of uh, uh, artwork by Rothko. Um, just kind of like how it merges in, but I didn't like the, the joint. So I covered it with the sentiment. So yes. So good. So I'm just putting everyone's names in. Um, let's just. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a lot of you tonight. So that's great. So lovely. So do you want to just shuffle over a bit? Yeah. Bit? Sorry. Oh, oh. Wibble wobble. Wibble wobble. So. Excellent. So I'm just going to come back to us for a moment so you can look up and everyone can see you. So good. So thank you very much. We're going to do a live drawing now. Um, so somebody is going to win tonight's card. So let's bring that over. 
We had 42 names in tonight, wow. so it's great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So the winner of that card is you can show oh. to the top one because I can see it. So. Oh, can they? Yes. <laughs> can you? <laughs> Um, so good. Or you can do it down there, actually, because I think I'm not sure what I can see. OK, okay I'll just do it on my face. <laughs> so the winner of this card is going to be... Good luck! Jackie! Jackie Elliott. Well done, Jackie. Please message us. And Barry and Jay at matusucrafts.com. <laughs> What's our name? <laughs> or Nana. So there we go. And we are live. Again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we've got to get used to the camera setup. We've got we've got things going on now. So um, congratulations, Jackie. Message us at Barry and J at mitosocrafts dot com. I'm sharing a seat with him. So and yes, let us know your details or if you'd love to receive this as well. Let's lift up your arm for a moment. Lift up my arm. There we go. Here's Tommy. <laughs> yes, he he's been. You can say hello. No, no he, he just wants to sit down. Yeah. Cool. So good. Excellent. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that tonight. Thank you very much for watching us. Um, it looks like I'm going to be doing Joseph um, technique on Sunday night. So at least I already know what I'm doing and I can plan for it. Um, yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah. So at least I know what I can do and plan. So, yes. Yeah, so watch this space. Same time, same place on Sunday night. The Joseph um, colour technique whatever it's called joseph technique isn't it yeah. i think yeah. yeah i better get playing <laughs> thank you everyone for watching thank you so much see you soon bye, bye. stay bye. safe take care oh don't me